think of Epiphone, you'd be forgiven for thinking they were just an affordable version of Gibson, much like Squire is to Fender and PRS SE is to PRS Core models. You most often see things like the Epiphone Les Paul and the Epiphone SG and assume that that is the sole purpose of the company's existence. But you'd be so wrong. <laughs> Epiphone has a history that's as rich and illustrious as Gibson's, producing their own truly original, unique guitars of their own. Some of them have similar Gibson equivalents, but a lot of these guitars are in their own world entirely. So what I thought we'd do today is go back through Epiphone's history, look at their roots, and some of the guitars that they produced back in their heyday that you can still buy today. Epiphone as a company started in 1873, by a man called Anas Anastasios Stathopoulos. He started off in the Ottoman Empire, back when it was the Ottoman Empire, before moving to New York shortly after. His son, Epaminodas, took over the business shortly afterwards in 1928 and renamed it Epiphone. Epi being his nickname and phone being the Greek for voice. Epiphone. At this point, I would like to stop and apologise to any Greek people who might have taken some offence to my pronunciation of some of those Greek words. Okay, moving on. Epiphone around this time started producing their own archtop guitars and continued to do so until around 1958 when they were purchased by Gibson, who were one of their main rivals in the archtop market. Of course, what we know about Epiphone now is its production of more affordable versions of Gibson guitars. Don't get me wrong, they still did this in the 1950s, producing guitars such as the Casino, which was essentially an affordable version of the Gibson 330, and the Sheraton, which of course uses the exact same body as a 335. Whilst they were affordable versions of Gibsons in essence, what sets them apart in the 50s compared to Epiphones now is the fact that they had their own unique identity and names. And that, in part, is why the Casino ended up becoming way more famous than the 330. Without knowing, you wouldn't think the Casino was a cheaper version of anything, and well, they just so happen to have been picked up by these guys. <laughs> As these guitars though, Epiphone were producing their own entirely original solid body guitars to go along with these thin lines that we've just discussed. These models included the Coronet, the Wilshire and the Crestwood. At this point in time, which was around 1958 to 1960, the only real solid body guitar Gibson were producing was the Les Paul. And don't let that fool you because the Les Paul was nowhere near as popular back then as it is now. These solid bodies were designed to be affordable 
and accessible to a much wider range of musicians. The Coronet, which was the most affordable of the lot, was shipped originally with a single P90 pickup. And that is exactly how it has been re-released in today's market as well. The Wilshire had two P90 pickups and the Crestwood Custom originally had two mini humbuckers as well as an option for a vibrato bridge. Into the 60s all of these guitars ended up featuring humbucking pickups on them, however in today's market for the re-releases they're all stuck to their original late 50s pickup configurations. And as well as that you get a vibrato bridge on the Crestwood whether you like it or not.
What made the Epiphones so popular in the 50s and the 60s was not necessarily so much their affordability in comparison to Gibson, but their affordability in their own right as instruments that just made them accessible to musicians all over the world. Fast forward to today, and these guitars are still in a similar market to their ancestors. Okay, they're not entry-level guitars, but they're also not a premium either. They're very accessible, and they give people looking for a affordable, unique, solid body guitar something to look for. They're a decent mid-range, vintage-inspired alternative to the bog-standard Les Pauls and Strats that you see in this more affordable market. So there you have it. There's a little look into the lesser-known side of Epiphone's surprisingly illustrious history. Of course, now they are known for being Gibson's more affordable alternative. I'm just saying, don't sleep on their original guitars, because if they were good enough for the Beatles, then they're good enough for you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little foray into Epiphone. What about you guys, though? Have you ever tried one of these original Epiphone guitars? Do you swear by a casino as opposed to a 330? Let us know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to see more things like this, and we will see you very soon. Mm -hmm.